Welcome everyone. I'm going to teach you today how to make these aged, distressed stars, snowflakes, pinwheels, whatever you want to call them. They're super versatile throughout the year. My name is Amber Seymour and normally you'll see me in the workshop working on larger projects, but I do like to teach how to do smaller projects. So this is a perfect starter project if you're just new to woodworking and it's super fun. So let's get started. So we're going to talk about items you will need first. So it is a woodworking class, so if you have a miter saw, that would be very helpful. You're going to see me switch between this one and I have a larger one over here depending on battery life. Uh, you need some basic protection, so eye protection, a dust mask, and some ear protection. And then you'll need a few pieces of wood, so I like to use like old fencing. This happens to be a scrap from a construction project. And then you'll need a just a little thin scrap for a backer. So that one's all bent, it doesn't even matter. And then for your other supplies, just whatever paint you like. And I have some wood stain and I have some paste wax because we are gonna age these and make them look distressed and old. And then I have some ribbon, a staple gun, and either a brad nailer or a pin nailer, whatever you have. Okay, so we're gonna move over to the miter saw next. You wanna set that miter saw at 45 degrees and we're just gonna leave it there. So we're gonna cut up to that top corner and just cut that off, that little scrap piece, we're gonna throw that away. And then I'm gonna line it up to the banding. You want all of these to be the same size. So it doesn't matter what size you choose, just make sure it's the same. So I'm going to cut quite a few of these. I build in bulk so you'll see that I <laughs> end up cutting quite a few boards here. But you can see I'm just lining it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you can get it close, that's great. If you know and want to build a jig so they're perfect, you can do that too. So I'm just gonna speed this up. And before you know it, I have a whole stack of wood to work with. So the next step is just to sand off the rough edges. And these are gonna be old and antique, so don't spend a lot of time, just think, you know, if it would give you a splinter, <laughs> sand it off. Just a really quick sand. So now that I have all of those sanded, I'm just going to match these up and start building a star. So the reason I'm doing this is because I used a whole bunch of different scrap wood from different sources. I have some fence here. I have some building material. Basically, I want to make sure that I have kind of the same thickness. Uh, because some of this wood is thicker than others and I did not plane it down. I just kind of go through and I do a dry run on them. So you can see I kind of start with the short edges, build them together, and oftentimes I'll build quite a few of them and then I'll come back and start gluing them up. And there is a long and a short edge to these, so you'll get it. Sometimes it's a bit of a puzzle. Okay, so now that I have the hang of it, I'm going to build a whole bunch at once and I'm speeding this up so you don't have to watch everyone. But again, I'm just building in bulk. I'm getting as many ready as I can fit on my bench. It just makes the glue up process faster. And here I'm gonna slow down and show you again why I match those up ahead of time because some are thicker, like that's great. That first one would not be so great and it would not staple up correctly. Okay, so we're finishing that up and we're moving over to the distressing part. So this is a little trick I learned. You just take some paste wax and I like to use a clear paste wax because if you use something dark, it might lift up through the paint. So basically I am putting that all around the edges to protect the wood from the paint we're gonna put on later and you'll see why. So I'm just gonna smooth down all the edges. You can kind of see that sheen on there this does not have to be perfect. You can leave it gloppy. It just doesn't matter. Because we want these stars to look really old, like you know, you took it off a really old, maybe grandma's old fence that has 20 layers of paint on it. That's how we want these to look. 
So again, I'm just going to go over every edge here. And had you want, wanted a super uniform look under your stars, you could have stained this wood first so the colors matched better. I don't mind the color variations. I just think that adds to it. So I'm just going to kind of, it's kind of sloppy here. But you get the idea. Just take that and work it around. Now, if you don't like a distressed look, just skip this step. Okay, we're getting close to the end, I promise. And I have heard of people using Vaseline instead. I have not tried that, but it would do the same thing. It would protect your wood. So if I had it on hand, I would definitely try that if you don't want to go buy the paste wax. Okay, so we're ready to move to the next step. I'm gonna whip the rest of these out first. Again, if you're building in bulk, just get them all done at once. So I'm just pausing to show a close up here. You can see in some areas it's thicker than others. I've got the chunks. That's okay. It will dry. It's not going to cause any harm when you're painting. Sloppier the better in this case. So now it's time for paint and I'm just going to kind of slop it on here. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time making it pretty. We're going to go over that wax. And I will caution you that when you are using um, white paint on wood, it's good to get a paint that has like a primer stain blocker in it because sometimes the tannins of that wood can lift through. So I just got this at Home Depot off the shelf. It wasn't anything special. Now, if you're using colored paints, so like, a, you know, the reds and the blues or something a little darker, it doesn't matter so much. If a little bit of that tan tannin lifts up, it doesn't look bad. But with white, it turns yellow and it definitely is not pretty. So invest in some decent paint. All right, so I'm just gonna keep working this. I'll probably throw a different color or two in there. And some I'm painting heavier than others, some I'm doing light. And we're gonna really scrape and distress these at the end. So again, just don't spend a lot of time getting them perfect. So again, I'm gonna speed this up. So I have some other paint going here. I'm using some chalk paint, some free paint I got off my neighborhood site. And look how sloppy and luscious that paint is. It's going to be really pretty. So the nice thing about these is they're super versatile. So I'm doing some white ones, some chippy white that everyone loves. I'm throwing in some greens and red for Christmas. Throwing in some blues. Um, because you can really use these in your decor all year round depending on what colors you use. So I'm just gonna pause and have you take a close-up look at this now that we're done. You can see I have some drips. You can see I have definitely have thicker paint than others. And on some of these, you can really see that wax underneath, how that will chip off at the end. And that will give you that really highly distressed look. So as you get used to these, you can you know lay it on heavy or a little lighter depending on your preference. And we're just gonna let these dry. Okay, so now we're going to start the distressing part. So you're just gonna get a scraper. What I'm using there is actually a trim guard for when you're painting the trim in your home, but it's just got a nice large edge that's easy to use. But if you don't have one of these, a credit card, uh, a putty knife, anything with a nice stiff edge will do. So I'm just scraping all the edges where we had that wax underneath the paint and you can see how easily it's lifting. So I'm just going to do an entire star here for you. And that wax does build up on your bench, so you want to like scrape it off once in a while so it doesn't end up on the back side of your other stars. Okay, so once you get them all done, I just piece it back together and I make sure that this distressing looks pretty even. If I see one that looks off, I'll go scrape it again, but you can kind of see how these will come together. So that one needed a little more. Okay, 
And you can kind of get a feel here how it will look. And sometimes, again, these are a puzzle. <laughs> Make sure you get the correct short and long edges lined up. All right, there it is. So once again, I'm gonna speed this up and I'm gonna run through all of these stars. So you kind of scrape and repeat, build, scrape and repeat. So we'll just do that over and over until we have all of these set and then we'll put them together. Okay, we're gonna pause and look at these and I really went after these with the wax and the scraper because I wanted them to look super old. So again, you do not have to get this aggressive just do it to your liking. So now it's time to start putting the backer on these. So you'll find when you watch my videos, I actually don't pull out a tape measure that often. I just kind of eyeball things. So I'm cutting a piece of wood that's just large enough so that each piece of wood can get a little meat on the bone over there. So I, I went over and I cut that on my table saw. And this can be as large as you want, of course, as long as the it doesn't peek through the other side. So now that I cut one piece, I know will work. I'm just going to mark off and cut a whole bunch of these at once. Again, we're building in bulk, make life easy for yourself. And we'll take these over to the saw. Okay, so we're gonna take this back to our miter saw and we're just going to do a straight cut at zero. So we're just going to cut a bunch of these, take it back to the bench and we'll start attaching. And through the magic of editing, I have my stack. So we're gonna take these back to the bench and I'm just gonna flip that star over because of course we're gonna attach that to the other side. And I kind of do this in stages because it's a little bit fragile until you get everything down. So I like to take my wood glue and I build it in quarters. And then I take my stapler and I staple it on there. And this isn't really meant to be a permanent source of affixing it. It just kind of holds it while the wood glue does its work. So you can see I'm gonna build this other quarter. And the other. And then one more here. And if those staples don't go in the in all the way, just hit it with your hammer. So now that we have the four quarters, I'm just going to glue those four quarters together. Now the other solution is you could use a much larger backer and just nail it right in, but I've found I have some separation when I do that. It doesn't always work perfectly, so this is what I found works best. Okay, so we're gonna just keep on gluing. <laughs> we're gonna get all these quarters put together now. Normally I have something to spread this glue, but I don't know where it went, so it's fingers today, I apologize. Okay, so I have everything all nice and snug, and then we're just gonna, again, repeat the process, get this stapled together. I say, so you can see that's a little flimsy, but you can kind of get the idea of how it will look. And then I'm just gonna flip that back over and I'm gonna attach that little backer. And if you're working with staples that didn't go in all the way, just hit them with a hammer. So they're nice and flush when you attach your backer. So now I'm just gonna take my brad nailer and get that down and I'm gonna to try to get each little corner 
and when this dries it will be solid and if you wanted to put some nails through the front to the back I do that as well often so we're just going to build out the rest of these much faster but you get the idea and I'll show you the end result so we're going to finish up this project and once you're done you might want to spray it down with a quick little coat of polycrylic especially if you've had any kind of um, like chalk paint in there it will just give it a nice little finishing seal and then for hanging hardware you can do a couple options you could either just hammer in a sawtooth which is the easiest or if you don't have that just take some ribbon and tie it in a little knot on the back and you can just staple it right to the back these are really light so you don't need any really heavy duty hardware okay now that these are done i thought i'd give you one last little peek at these i hope you enjoyed the project and if you did please like and subscribe so i can keep adding more classes in the future thank you